Bible Read Along, committed to developing Christ-centered, Bible-based, Spirit-filled believers who love God, love His Word, and love sharing it with others. BibleReadalong.com Good Biblical Morning! Yeah, welcome back to Bible Read Along. Thank you so much for being here. We value your time. Um, we don't want to waste your time. We value connection. We want to connect with you. So thank you for taking some time to be here with us this morning, maybe for the first time or regularly or every morning. Thank you. Thank you. We have people that fall into all categories, some that show up for the first time, some, some that are here regularly and some that are here every day. Thank you so much. Bible Read Along would not be what it is today without you. And what is Bible Read Along? Well, we take one chapter of scripture, we look at it, we try to understand context, history, application, and really just do an in-depth Bible study, chapter by chapter. So right now we are studying the book of Mark, the gospel of Mark, and uh, we invite you to join along if you've missed other videos. They are available on Facebook, YouTube, and audio and video podcasts. All the links, you see all the things there. All the links are available though right at BibleReadalong.com. Com. So check out our website, follow us on social media, and then help spread the word. If you enjoy what we are doing, please share this with friends, family, and others. Share it with your church, Bible study, spam groups. Do whatever you want to do to help spread the word. We would greatly appreciate it. Say hello. Let me know that you're here in the comments. We've got some people that have joined us already on Facebook, some of our regulars, the faithful ones that are here day after day. Morning, Aggie in Red Deer, Alberta. Matthew in Kelowna, BC. Janet's here in, from Saskatchewan. Phyllis in Ohio. Welcome, Gina in Montana. Um, Matthew, so we were asking before we started, before we went live, we were asking what kind of short form content would you like to see? Let me know in the comments. Christopher on TikTok says, I expect a highly produced Spielberg-esque short. Well, that's maybe my problem. That's what I've been trying to do. And it's hard. That's a lot of work. But um, what are you looking for? And so Matthew suggested funny humor Bible jokes. That might be interesting. That might be something I could do quick one you know that would be uh some of the guys i think of and follow they do you know here's the 15 second thought for you i could just do the bible joke of the day right so maybe i will try that matthew i think that is a great suggestion anyone else comments about what you what kind of short content you like to see let me know lisa's here phoenix arizona welcome say hello share this out today we are going to be looking at mark chapter nine now we've already done two videos on this and if you've missed them again available facebook and youtube is the primary places those are the easiest to find um, go check them out we also one of our conversations the first half of mark nine led into an amazing conversation about the spiritual realm spiritual versus the natural realm spiritual warfare, spiritual gifts, tongues, prophecy, evangelism. We talked about all of these things in kind of just a chat discussion. It's not a teaching. I don't go through scripture. It's just a discussion, but people are finding it very helpful to understand some spiritual things that they maybe did not fully understand before. So that is available on our YouTube. Go check it out. Um, it's between Mark 9 and you'll see it says spiritual warfare, spiritual topics. That's what it's called. Um, go check it out. It is a great video uh, just regarding some of the spiritual things that sometimes as Christians we don't understand or we're afraid to talk about or we've maybe been taught wrong. And, uh, you know, we get taught, I was, I am still a charismatic, but I was raised very charismatic and uh, non-denominational charismatic. And so a lot of what I learned was hyper charismatic and everything is spiritual and angels. And, and, and I had to learn balance there and go, I don't, that's, it sounded really cool when I was a kid and it was exciting and people would shout and cheer and, you know, but 
Is it biblical? Because at Bible Read Along, we want to be Bible-based, Christ-centered, Spirit-filled believers. And so that is what we do. So today, let's pray and get into Mark chapter 9. Again, say hello. If you're watching and haven't yet had a chance to say hi, please let me know you're here. We always love to know who's watching, even if you're just scrolling through. Say hi for a minute and then continue on your way. Lord Jesus, thank you for another day. Thank you for the gift of life. We ask that your Holy Spirit teach us and lead us and guide us through your word as we listen and watch today. In Jesus' name, amen. So Mark chapter 9. Um, let me get this set up. Mark chapter 9. Go and uh, grab a Bible if you have one. Read along with us. But we have already gone through. So Jesus kind of is finishing his speech from Mark chapter 8. We go into the transfiguration. That's not just a transformation. It's actually like a transform to a higher spiritual level. Um and so we see that we went through the transfiguration. His disciples don't know what to do. We should build altars. No, don't tell anyone yet. Jesus heals a boy possessed by an impure spirit. This boy, this demon was causing muteness. Um, again, we're going to see all of this. I'm just kind of doing a quick overview here. Welcome, Wanda. Uh, Jesus heals it. Some great stuff we talked about here about belief, about faith, Um about you know faith doesn't depend on the results we don't stop believing because we didn't get what we asked for we keep believing who god is jesus predicts his death a second time and whoever's not against us other people start casting out demons healing the sick preaching the gospel and he says if they're not against us they're for us don't stop them then we got into causing anyone to stumble one of the little ones and it actually talks about those who believe in me and we talked about new christians what that looks like um for for brand new christians how are we treating the new christians are we are we causing them to stumble or are we causing them to grow that's Mark chapter 9. Let's dig in to the Bible. Again, I will probably stop this a little bit as we go through it. But um, here we go. If you are ready, if you are ready, type in the chat video. Type in the chat video today because today we're watching the video. The Gospel of Mark full movie, Lumo by Jesus.net on YouTube. Type in the chat video. There we are. People are ready. Let's dive in to Mark chapter 9. Um, da, 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 da. I'm going to unmute this. Make sure it works for Facebook and TikTok. Here we go. And he said to them, truly, I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see that the kingdom of God has come with power. So I'll pause here for just a second. Um, he, This is reading from the NIV version, which is what we normally read. So if you want, you can actually read along. I like to watch and read and listen. And I just find I get so much more when I'm reading it, hearing it at the same time. But you do what's best for you. But this is the NIV version, word for word. You can read along as we watch. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Sorry, again, uh, for Facebook, we talked about 
Um, we talked about this, you know, the spiritual realm, they see into the spiritual realm. They actually know people in the spiritual realm. They recognize them right away. They didn't introduce themselves. Um, we got bedhead Jesus here in the video, <laughs> a little messy hair. Uh, but, uh, I, I was actually hoping this was going to be a little more spectacular than what they're showing us right now, but that's okay. Let's keep going here. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. They kept. So that's an interesting phrase there, not to say anything until Jesus has risen from the dead. Again, he clearly tells them, I'm going to rise up. Um, there is a resurrection coming. Um, so, yeah, it's just interesting. Um, also interesting, you know, sometimes like Peter didn't know what to say. God, we should make an altar because he was scared and didn't know. Sometimes we don't understand the things of God. And when we don't understand, we want to immediately try and fix. And I have an idea. We should do this instead of sometimes you got to just wait on things and just go, God, I don't get this. I don't understand. Teach me, lead me, help me. Kept the matter to themselves, discussing what rising from the dead meant. And they asked him, why did the teachers of the law say that Elijah must come first? Jesus replied, to be sure, Elijah does come first and restores all things. Why then is it written that the son of man must suffer much and be rejected? But I tell you, Elijah has come, and they have done to him everything they wished, just as it is written about him. Again, this is an interesting question because they just saw Elijah on the mountain of transfiguration. They just saw him. And then they start asking, you know, we're not talking about what happened, but does Elijah come first? Now, there's a few things that this could mean. We talked about this already in the other videos, so you can go check those out. But this could be Elijah, the actual prophet from Kings. Um, he came first. He physically came first. This could be talking about John the Baptist, who was said to have come in the spirit of Elijah, preparing the way, make straight the paths. Um, this could be talking about the transfiguration, that Elijah actually just appeared on this mountain so there is some there is some things there but no matter what interpretation you want to look at the truth is the prophecy was fulfilled that elijah must come first when they came to the other disciples they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them as soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about? He asked. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, How long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, 
said Jesus. Everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said. I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet and he stood up. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, this kind can come out only by prayer. And some translations will say by prayer and fasting. Um, interesting here, and it's it's we've talked a little bit about this as well, but it's very interesting here. Um, you, it's easy. We, we read tone into scripture and some of it is context and some of it is us reading our own tone into it. For example, when he said you unbelieving generation, um, how long, uh, where is this? You unbelieving generation, how long will I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring him, bring him to me. Even in the video here, they made it seem like Jesus is very angry. Um, this may be the wrong tone could be, he could have been angry, but we see now as we go into, um, the next part here, uh, there's a part where kids run to Jesus. They love him. He holds them. He picks them up. Kids don't run to angry people. Someone who's yelling and screaming all the time. Kids don't do that. Now, does that mean they don't run to someone who may yell at times and Jesus may have got stern. He did get stern at times. Um, but this also could have been a tone of compassion. Jesus moved with compassion and the compassion is you unbelieving generation. How long will I be with you? Don't you guys see, I'm trying to teach you, train you this. And it's not a frustration. It could be a broken heartedness to go, oh, they're not getting it yet. Tone. So tone is important. Um, but, uh, you know, we need to, we, we need to look at that and go, what did, what did he say? Did Jesus have stern moments as a parent? Do you have stern moments? Yes. Do your kids still run to you? Yes. So it's not either, or it could be both. And, but I just think I, the challenge I, I wanted to present here, um, you know, is uh, I'm stealing all Christopher's thoughts. Um, but the challenge I wanted to present here is sometimes the tone that we first read things in is not the actual tone it appeared in. And so sometimes I personally like to take scriptures like this and read it with different tones and go, what, what could this mean? What if he used this tone? What if Jesus used this tone? It's, it's interesting to kind of look and study scripture in that way sometimes, um, but then we always have to come back to scripture and go, what's the context? Can we depict tone from the context? Morning, guys that are just uh, joining in. Sorry, I'm reading your mind this morning, Christopher. Uh, if you guys have other questions, let me know. Miranda said on Facebook, Jesus loves the little children. Um, was a young child Sunday school song I remember singing in church. Amen. And he does, and we're going to see that in a little bit more here where he actually picks up kids and hangs out with them and holds on. And Jesus, there was something about Jesus. There's still something about Jesus, but there was something about Jesus. Welcome, Sharon. Uh, there was something about Jesus that attracted all sorts of people. He attracted farmers. He attracted businessmen. He attracted kings and leaders. He attracted the religious, those that, and I don't just mean that in a bad word, but those in structured faith systems, he, he could speak to them. He spoke to children. They would run to him. Men, women, children, all ages. It's interesting. Jesus had a way of speaking that reached everyone. 
God help us to do the same with your message. They left that place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were because he was teaching his disciples. He said to them, the son of man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him and after three days he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant and were afraid to ask him about it. Interesting thing here, and I see some more questions I want to answer here as well. But interesting, they didn't understand and they're afraid to ask him. How many times in our own Christian lives, too, do we do the same thing? Um, you know, maybe we don't understand what God's doing, what he's saying, what he's teaching us, his word. And we're afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to ask. And so speaking of asking, there's some questions. Janet says, I don't understand why the disciples were unable to cast out this spirit. Was it because they didn't believe they could? Um, no, I don't I don't think so. And and this is my own thoughts now. Take it with a grain of salt. But I think to me, when I look at this, there are levels of maturity. When we are first a new Christian, um, you know, Paul talks about this. We might be excited. There's, you know, we love the milk and we're drinking and people feed us and change us and help us. And, and everyone does everything for us. But as we mature, we can't stay children. When I was a child, I thought as a child, but as I matured, I couldn't. And I actually think that this was Jesus teaching them. Um, sorry, I need to, my nose is itchy and I'm going to sneeze. Um, this is Jesus teaching them that as you rise up in maturity of your Christian faith, and what do I mean? This doesn't mean you're better or worse. It means you're at a different level. And as you enter new levels of influence, new levels of authority, new levels of understanding, levels of wisdom, that with that comes new attack. And with new attack comes new um, new countermeasures. That's the best, best way I can say it. So in this, it, we're, the disciples had already cast out demons. We see that in scripture. But this kind can't come out except for by prayer and fasting. And I think this was a lesson to the disciples and can be a lesson to us as well. That sometimes just because something didn't happen, we prayed for it, it didn't happen. It doesn't mean we're lacking faith. It doesn't mean that we're lacking relationship with God. What it does mean is we may need to press in further to see what God will do. We see this throughout scripture. We see this with Daniel, that he began to pray and an angel came. And then when the angel arrives and says, um, you know, I, I heard from the first prayer, but it took three weeks to come of constant prayer and fasting. You had to break through something to, to have authority in this area. And I think this is the lesson to the disciples saying, again, this a lot of this chapter talks about pride. And we talked about that in our other videos. But a lot of this talks about pride. And I think this is saying, hey, don't think you have it all together. Don't think that you are something special. Wow, you cast out some demons. And so now every time you should just cast out demons. No, the more important thing is what? Prayer and fasting, which really is keys to greater relationship with God. So, so this is not saying you don't have faith. I think this is saying this requires a deeper dependency on God. This requires a deeper connection, relationship, level of authority to deal with. And so that's how I take this. Um, if you have other thoughts, put them in the chat. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm seeing some here. Sharon says maybe it just wasn't their time yet. Timing could be part of this. Um, to me, I think this is my, my pastor. I joke, he, our founding pastor of the church I attend, uh, he says this new levels, new devils. And, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of cliche a little bit, but what he's talking about is as you rise up in new areas, 
there's often attack from the enemy. And with that attack, we have to learn new strategy on how to fight the enemy, fight these spiritual battles. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities, powers, and um, I should look up that verse. We'll actually read that here in a second. I'm going to look it up. Let's keep watching um, Mark 9. They came to Capernaum. When he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the 12 and said, anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. He took a little child whom he placed among them. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. Teacher, said John, we saw someone driving out demons in your name and we told him to stop because he was not one of us. Do not stop him. Okay, so let's talk about this because this is this is what we're still talking about, right? Um, you know, there's different levels here. And so now the disciples, this is back to the pride issue, right? Um, we've been casting out demons. Look how amazing we are. We're doing the work with Jesus. But now we saw other people doing this. And this is what we talked about in the other video. Again, I encourage you to go watch it. We've seen other people doing this. How come they can do it? We thought we were special. And Jesus is saying, no, this is for everyone. The gospel, this cross is for everyone. Uh, we played a song from my pastor a couple week, days ago about that. This cross is for everyone. The gospel is for everyone. The authority that you can walk in is for everyone. And so this was them going, we don't understand why other people are now doing what we thought was special to us. Nope. Not special to you, not special to the Jews, not spe this is to everyone. That's why Mark, the gospel of Mark, deals a lot with Greek and Romans and Gentile believers because it's showing that this is for all. This is for anyone. Now, the new levels. So Ephesians 6, and I'll start at verse 10 and then we'll come back to this. But Ephesians 6 talks about this. Finally, be strengthened by the Lord. By his vast strength. I'm reading the Holman Christian Standard Bible. Um, so it's little, maybe a little different. But put on the full armor of God. You've heard this. If you're a Christian, you've probably heard these verses. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the tactics of the devil. Now put on the full armor of God so you can stand against the schemes, the tricks, the wiles of the devil. Um, what does that mean? Well, we need to be strengthened. I don't believe this is a one-time thing. I believe this is an ongoing thing. Lord, continually strengthen me. We need to put on the armor of God. Again, this is not a one-time thing. This is as we go into battle, There, we really face a spiritual battle. There is really spiritual warfare that we are going to face in this world. And so as you go into battle, make sure you have the right, the full armor on, helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, the shoes of the gospel of peace. You know, we put on the full armor of God. Why? Because as we rise to new levels of authority, influence, greatness, whatever it may be, and I believe that's biblical too. I know I'm, it's sounding word. Let me use more biblical words so that you, you see that in scripture. We go from glory to glory to glory to glory. This is biblical. So as we rise up in new levels, um, and I'm not saying everyone's going to be, you're going to be amazing and you're going to have your best life ever and you're going to be the boss and you're going to be the CEO and you're, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying we rise up from glory to glory. We grow, we, we mature, there's new levels. And as we do those new levels, we need God to continually strengthen us. We need to continually put on the armor of God. Let's keep going here. For our battle is not against flesh and blood but against the 
rulers, against authorities, another level, against the powers um, of this world of darkness, against spiritual forces. Do you see the levels here? So some of us might be fighting battles not against flesh and blood. Good, that's first level. We realize this isn't, uh, it's my spouse, my boss, my kids, my neighbor, my, my, that stranger that cut me off. They are not the issue. Sin is the issue. World mindsets are the issue. World perceptions are the issue. The way of thinking is the issue. This is level one. Like this is level one spiritual warfare. I hope this is helping. Um, what's the next level? And I'll maybe read this in a different translation too. I pick every year, I pick a new translation to read through. And to this year is the, the Holman Christian study Bible. Um, uh, our battle is not against flesh and blood level one, but against rulers level two against authorities level three against the world powers four of darkness against the spiritual forces of evil five we see levels here of spiritual warfare this is actually laid out very well and so we see this let me read in the niv our biggest struggle is not against flesh and blood but against rulers authorities powers of dark world against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms the king james says for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers. What's a principality? It's a way of thinking. It's a wrong mindset. It's worldly thinking instead of godly thinking. So we wrestle against principalities. We wrestle against powers. We wrestle against rulers of the darkness of this world. We wrestle against spiritual wickedness in high places. I hope that this helps you see those levels. So why couldn't the devil, why couldn't the, the, the disciples cast out that devil? new level. It's going to require strength from God. It's going to require armor. It's going to require now Paul's writing this later with greater insight, right? Cause this has already happened. They know the stories. They know the resurrection. He's understanding things at a different level than the disciples did at this time. But now we see, and it's laid out in scripture, these levels of warfare. And as God calls us to new levels, there's new devils, there's new attack, there's new strategies, there's new things that are going to come against us that we have to prepare for. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe it could be, it could be the greatest day of your life. Yes, I may be, that might be my impression of someone that you may know smiling on TV. Okay, um, but let's keep going. Mark chapter nine, because I'm preaching about spiritual warfare today. I love this. I, I used to teach spiritual warfare. I don't think it's as complicated and as weird ooh, as we as we make it out to be. Um, I think it's actually very simply laid out in scripture. There's levels. There's levels of authority. There's levels that are going to require new reliance on God, new strength, new relationship, putting on the armor. Back to Mark chapter 9. Jesus said, For no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Truly, I tell you, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah will certainly not lose their reward. If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them if a large millstone were hung around their neck and they were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands to go into hell, where the fire never goes out. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where the worms that eat them do not die, and the fire is not quenched. Everyone will be salted with fire. 
Salt is good. But if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? Have salt among yourselves and be at peace with each other. All right, there it is. Um, Mark chapter 9. I would encourage you go check out our other videos as well because we went into more in-depth explanation of this last part of scripture the salt um talking about hell cutting off your hands gouging out your eyes figurative not literal um because that is that's context who's your best friend when reading the bible context um you know and so this is uh this is important because we know it's not literal because otherwise the disciples would have been cutting off hands, gouging out eyes of themselves and other believers. We don't see that anywhere in scripture, history, other contexts. So this is figurative and they took him at that. What is he saying? Get rid of anything in your life that is going to not help you fight battles that we've been talking about and represent Jesus. If you do anything in my name, the little ones, the kids, it actually says that when he was doing this, he was holding one of the children. Um, you know, in, in my name means as my ambassador on my behalf, speaking, you know, representing me. And so what is this saying? Cut out anything that's going to hold you back from fighting battles and representing Jesus to the world. That's Mark chapter 9. We did it. Yeah, we did it. Um, what do you guys think? Let me know. Um, yes, Janet. Janet says, this is a great comment. Um, I feel I have a long ways to go understanding everything, but now I understand this about spiritual warfare. Thank you. I feel I have a long ways to go too. And I think there's people that again, sometimes we got to look and go different doesn't mean wrong. There are going to be people that have different understandings of different spiritual warfare things than I do. And different doesn't mean wrong, but we always want to find it in scripture. We want to have Bible based Christ centered, you know, um, faith. Now, verse 32, Mark 9, 32, but they did not understand this statement and they were afraid to ask. I think all of us are going to see things that, you know, Janet, you just said, I don't understand everything, but I'm understanding a little bit more. Yay. That's so exciting to be, you know, glory to glory. We begin to grow. We begin to mature. Um, and if we don't understand anything, don't be afraid to ask. And that does not mean just me. I don't have all the answers, but who do we ask? Well, we ask scripture first, go to the Bible, search it, look it up, study it, look at commentaries, look at translations, look at, you know, do a word study in scripture. Like some of, some of us as Christians have never even done some of these things. Our Bible studying has been like, well, what we're doing here, somebody explained it to me. That's great. And that's, that can be helpful. Faith comes by hearing, but man, authority comes by you stepping into the word yourself and going, I need to know what the Bible says about this. So we go to the Bible, we go to tools that help the Bible, um, commentaries, concordance, original words. We go to these kind of things. Then if we still have questions, we go to, um, leaders in our life. And we go to brothers and sisters in our life that we can talk to and go, I don't understand what the scripture means. What do you think? Let's talk about it. Let's look it up. So that's what I suggest. Uh, Gina, we can trust the level we are in as Christians as we lean into Jesus. Also, we are never supposed to envy somebody else's level and walk in Christ. Yes, this isn't a better, worse. It isn't, I want to be them. It's it desire spiritual gifts. We talked about that in that whole chat about spiritual things. Desire spiritual gifts. It's not wrong. And it's not wrong to look at someone and go, wow, I wish I could be like them. That's not wrong. What is wrong and jealousy and envy is when that begins to consume us and all we can think about is, I want to be like them. I'm going to be better than them. I'm going to be, and this is jealousy and envy. It is not wrong to look at with admiration and go, wow, I want to be more like Jesus. Wow. I want to be more like his disciples. Wow. I want to be more like my pastors and leaders and wow. I want to be more like, like revival and, and, um, 
pastors of history and, and historical revivals. And uh, wow, I want to be like, name the person. And it's not wrong to admire and look at that. That's not jealousy and envy. That's actually a godly thing. Now, what we have to do is still go, but it's okay that I'm here where I am but I want to keep growing. So Lord, thank you. We say this in recovery and I say this often to some of the guys in recovery. I'm not the man I used to be. Thank God. And I'm not yet the man I want to be. In other words, I'm still on this journey too. I've come a long way. I can look back and go, yay, God, you've done amazing things. But I have to look ahead too and go, God, keep working in me. Keep me, and I'm going to keep studying, learning, growing, asking questions, pushing forward to understand the things of God. Um, Miranda, you explained that exactly as I was thinking. Thank you. Uh, it was like I'm finally understanding what interpretation Daniel gives. Thank you, Daniel and Ashley. You're very welcome, Miranda. We love doing this. This is why we do it. People are growing in the Bible. This is this is the whole goal. Um I have gift envy when it comes to music. Oh man, I led music last night at Celebrate Recovery. I haven't played a lot because of my hand. Like I've played twice publicly in two years and I used to play all the time. Um, so I, I played last night and I butchered it. It was so bad. Ashley said it was good. She's such an encouragement to me, but I had the wrong tune for the song. So I'm singing it weird and people couldn't follow me and I... It was pretty rough last night. And I, I was in a stage of envy. I was going, I wish I could just be a better musician. Help. Um, Gina, God is very individual plan for each of us collectively. We need each other. God has a plan. You're not supposed to be someone else. You could be like them and you could take qualities they have, but you're not supposed to be someone else. The only person we are supposed to be is like Jesus as his ambassadors, as his followers um guys i think that's it we're gonna end now what i will do today is actually no i'm gonna end on facebook we're gonna still end we're gonna go live still on tiktok so if you want come on over and uh come join us for the conversation if you got more questions tiktok's the place to come do it god bless you guys and we will be back tomorrow with more of Bible Read Along, and we have some exciting guest speakers coming up. Um, when we get to Mark chapter 12, my friend Elizabeth Fowler, or known on TikTok as the Itty Bitty Bible Study, she will be leading us in Mark chapter 12. My brother, Pastor Rocket, uh, he will be leading us in Mark 16. So you want to keep coming back? Tomorrow we will be starting Mark chapter 10, but I'm telling you this... This is just building and building on top of each other. The more, you know, we begin to see the context of each chapter, but we begin to see the context of the book, how they, how they are woven together. I can't interlock my fingers anymore. Come on. How they are woven together, how they connect, how they, how they draw from each other, the themes that flow through scripture. You don't want to miss it. Make sure you come back. And until then, God bless you. Keep living like Jesus. Keep sharing this out with others. And let's just light the world up with the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Bible, Bible Read Along. Along. Committed, Committed to, to developing Christ-centered, Bible-based, Spirit-filled believers who love God, love His Word, and love sharing it with others. BibleReadAlong.com